Discover a wild world of wonder and excitement and find out how you and your friends can help protect it. Bonaparte says if you give a hoot about nature, you'll love Owl TV. Weekdays at 1230 on YTV. Guess who's waiting for you at the marsh? There's Maggie. I was born to be a sailor, or a climber, or a muncher, or a bouncer. I love bouncing. And Stax? I thought I was just like everyone else. Just a whole lot smarter. And Mudslinger. This marsh mud does wonders for our complexion. Come on down to Groundling Marsh, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 2 on YTV. I don't feel any different. We're famous, I tell you. Each week, YTV News questions the world around us, from violence in schools to street theater to bodybuilding, demanding answers to the issues. Get wise to the ways of the world with YTV News, coming up next. Can hard labor put these guys on the straight and narrow? When a trip to an amusement park can make you fall in love. And Chicago's favorite toy boy puts on the cheese. Hi! Ooh! Hi and welcome to YTV News. As you know, Rhea is no longer with us and Jan is still on vacation. So I'm the only member of the YTV News family in studio this week. You know, the term family, it doesn't exactly mean what it did, say, 10, 20 years ago. Why? Because the family structure is constantly changing. To begin with, at least one out of every three marriages end in divorce. That means a lot of children are being raised by one parent. But then some people remarry and that creates a whole new kind of family. Bigger than Blue Mountain. It was three times. Iris and yeah. Erica Valsic are sisters. Well, sort of. You see, they have the same mother, but different fathers. They're half-sisters. Ever since I was six years old, Iris came in the front door. Brand newborn baby, and she was my little sister. Yeah. And that's it. For Iris and Erica, it's been pretty easy. But Charity Barkwell had a much tougher time adjusting to her new family. My mother remarried, and they, my mother told me that they were, I was going to have, well, first my sister and then my brother came along my immediate feeling was uh oh they're gonna treat me as the new newest babysitter it's been two years since charity went from being an only child to having a new half brother and sister I guess I was a little bit jealous because I felt that they were taking over my mother and I thought she'd be maybe be too busy or too doing something with them that she wouldn't be able to have time for me anymore Ernie Mares is a family counselor he says Charity's fears of being neglected are very common. The teenager may have gotten more attention, and there's all this um, excitement and attention being placed on this new child, uh, and feelings of uh, resentment, bitterness of being displaced will uh, take place. But Erica says she wasn't worried about herself. She was mostly concerned about Iris. I was never hurt myself, but I think I might have felt that Iris might have been hurt because there were so many other brothers and sisters that were all from the same parents and she might have felt like an outsider. When we used to go over to her father's house, I would sort of feel out of place because they would be a normal family with their father and I would be sort of like a friend who came over for dinner or something. I've always wondered if we'd be any closer or maybe farther apart if I had the same father she did. Do you think you would have adjusted easier to them being a younger brother sister if they had the same father as you did? Yes, I might have accepted them differently because I knew that they were really, I guess you could say mine. I knew they were really all my blood and all my family. Kids who have half brothers or half sisters will have conflicts, but um, invariably, um, um, final acceptance involves working through your feelings. And that's exactly what Charity did. 
Once they were born, I got used to the situation of them being in the house, and I just made my adjustment by getting to know them and feeling close to them as if they were my real brothers and sisters and getting past the fact that they are half my brother and sister. So basically that was it. For Iris and Erica, the challenge hasn't been their relationship, but how society sees their family. It doesn't matter what anyone else thinks, that if we feel within ourselves and together that we are full sisters, then it doesn't matter. They say, oh, you don't look anything like your sister, and it's sort of annoying because I know I don't look like her, but I know we are sisters at the same time. If the parents tell you to do something, you can make them do it. <laughs> Best thing about having a sister is I can learn from her mistakes before I do them myself. If they're old, older than you, then they're always there for you, and they always help you out and stuff. I mooch money off them and beat them up every day. If I need my sister, she's always there for me and I'm always there for her. And I can tell her anything I want. I'm really open with her and she's very open with me and I'm always there for her to support her through thick and thin. I don't know. I don't have one. You can wear their clothes. <laughs> to have a friend that you can talk to all the time. <laughs> nothing, man. <laughs> ah, nothing like a brotherly thrashing. Well, as long as they don't take their aggression out on other people, I suppose it's okay. But some teenagers have trouble with self-control, and sometimes it gets them into trouble with the law. A lot of young offenders end up in detention centers, or, as Roger Marcello found out, some of them go to camp. This is how Joe is spending his summer, digging ditches, chopping wood, and cleaning campsites. It's hard work, but it's better than going to prison. You see, Joe is a young offender. The charge I was charged with was with criminal negligence causing bodily harm. And uh, it was a gun accident. I was unloading it, and I accidentally shot my best friend. His friend survived, but Joe was in trouble. He was facing up to a year in a detention center. But a new program lets offenders like Joe choose between camps like this and prison. They're giving back to the community. Patty Mead runs Camp Shunda, which is about three hours north of Calgary. She says the program gives young offenders a chance to get their lives back on track. It's to learn a work ethic and to take responsibility and to feel like they can learn to accomplish things. They've done something wrong. They've offended against society. In this way, they're paying back. A lot of people think that if you get in trouble with the law, you should go directly to jail. But the people at Camp Shunda think that this is a lot better than doing hard time behind bars. People like Paul. He's here because he was caught stealing and vandalizing property. He says the camp will help him find a job. You learn a lot. Like, you, like a lot of the stuff you learn here, you can put on a job resume. 20 young offenders at Camp Shunda think the program is worth all the backbreaking work. We stand out here for eight hours a day. I'm chopping all the firewood for the local campgrounds. Helping out the rangers. The community service work. Doing whatever needs to be done. We work hard, uh, five days a week, sometimes uh, six, seven days a week. And like any good camp, Joe knows that his experience here can make a difference in the way he lives the rest of his life. Out here, they really care about you. And they, like, they seem to, you know, they know what's going on. They care about what you're doing, and they want to see you prosper in your future life. So far, Camp Shunda is the only program of its kind in Canada. But the program is so successful that Manitoba is looking into setting up similar camps. For YTV News, I'm Roger Marcello in Nordeg, Alberta. a refreshing holiday without leaving one's backyard. I woke up this morning, was feeling sad. A leaky diaper was the what I had. Let's break for Huggies Ultra Trim, the thin diaper that really performs. It's so absorbent it protects against leaks like no diaper ever before. Huggies Ultra Trim for incredible leakage protection. Now my diaper's working like a really great diaper should. Huggies Ultra Trim just make me feel so good.
I could read, but I couldn't always make sense of what I was reading. I don't want a job doing labor all my life. Last year I went to college and I couldn't do it. I couldn't keep up with them. I should just give up. When I made a spelling mistake, they never said anything about it. One day I decided, you know, my education skills weren't perfect. I figure I know to read a little. I just need to improve on that. You can improve. Every day got easier and easier and easier. Like I figure it's like a puzzle. Once you get it, you'll always have it. Learning new things every day makes you feel so much better. I can make my dream come true now. I can do more reading, more writing. I feel very proud of myself. I never know the sweetness of reading and writing. I'm going for it, and I'm going all the way. Education is a right that all people should have. For help, look in the new yellow pages under Learn. It worked. <laughs> That's all I can say, it worked. Over the past six months, my best friend has been going through a breakup. She's been back together five and six times with the same guy, and she just doesn't get it. So for her benefit and everyone's, I've compiled a list of the top seven reasons you know your relationship is over. Number seven, you're constantly unhappy. Dead giveaway, right there. Number six, when you think about them, you can only remember the bad stuff. Number five, when you fight, you fight about little stupid things for no reason. Number four, your relationship feels one-sided or you feel avoided or you're avoiding the other person. Number three, you want to focus on revenge, not on making the other person happy. Number two, you've broken up more than twice, dead giveaway again. And the number one reason you know your relationship is over, if he's dating someone else. That's always a good indication. If you've got something to say, you can do it here on YTV News. Get in front of a camcorder and record a one-minute video message. Send it to us, and if we put it on the air, you'll get a YTV News baseball cap. Here's our address. It's YTV News, 64 Jefferson Avenue, Unit 18, Toronto, Ontario. M6K, 3H3. It's time now to check into our weird job file. After Hot Dog Woman, The Klingon, and The Spritzer Girls, I thought I'd seen it all. Can it get any weirder? Well, yes. YTV's Corey Atkins was in Chicago a little while ago, and he met someone outside the huge FAO Schwartz toy store. This person's job is, well, I'll let Corey tell you all about it. Oh, you hurt that toy soldier's feelings! FAO Schwarz is one of the largest toy stores in the U.S. and at each one of their stores you'll find someone like Sean Leonard standing guard. I started uh, this job about two months ago. I needed a job for the summer so I, uh, a friend of mine told me of uh, FAO Schwarz hiring for new positions so I came down and they asked if I wanted to be the toy soldier so I said that would be great. I love children. And it's a great job. <laughs> Sean works about 30 hours a week as the toy soldier, but he's also an ambassador for the store. Hi! Ooh, that would look great on you! And the city. Introduce people, help them out if they need help, you know, going places or eating somewhere or where things are. That's where the restroom is! See ya! Would I be caught doing that? Yeah. I wouldn't mind, it's fun. Oh, yeah, no. I think so. Yeah? I mean, there's nothing like getting paid for putting makeup on and standing there in a big hat. With every job, there are the positives. Well, I guess one of the neat jobs is demoing new toys, such as the bubble gun here. You get to really, you get to show kids, you know, what it's all about. And it, give them first-hand experience on, you know, what the new toys are in and out. And the negatives. Oh, no! Ah! It gets a little tiring after once in a while, and not every kid is great, you know. Some will kind of abuse you, but, you know, just take it with a grain of salt. And... Yay! Yay, my turn! If you looked up my job description in a textbook, it would probably say, Looney, and have a picture of me. I don't know, I guess a lot of people think I'm a little off-center, but that's what you gotta be. You gotta be a little off-center, because then it's not fun. And fun is something that F.A.O. Schwarz and Sean Leonard are not short of. Hi. How are you? Good. In Chicago, Illinois, getting educated in the world of toys, I'm Corey Atkins for YTV News. It was, it was, it's raining. 
Meet Bonnie and Clyde, two house pets from South America. The monkeys have been living in Quebec with Nicole Leclerc for four and a half years, but now they're about to be taken away. The Quebec government requires wildlife pets to have numbered microchip implants and licenses. Nicole admits she was negligent and didn't get her marmoset monkeys registered. Quebec's wildlife department says now it's too late. The animals will be taken to their new home at the Granby Zoo. This is Magnum. He's a male house cat from Newfoundland and he's lucky to be alive. Magnum suffered severe wounds to the neck and shoulder after he was caught in a rabbit snare for about two weeks. Veterinarians decided that since Magnum was tough enough to survive those two weeks in the snare, he was worth saving. Magnum is expected to recover and should be on his feet soon. This plant may look like a beauty, but it's really a beast. It's called purple loosestrife and it's sucking the life out of a good chunk of North America's wetlands. The plant can turn a wet area completely dry, killing plants, fish and other wildlife. In Ontario, a swarm of leaf and root-eating insects are being let loose on the plants because that seems to be the only way to keep purple loosestrife under control. Something else that looks almost unstoppable is the U.S. basketball squad known as Dream Team 2. It's made up of superstars like Shaquille O'Neal, Alonzo Mourning, and Joe DeMars. And right now, they're competing against Canada and 14 other countries for the World Championship of Basketball. Our first person this week is one of Canada's best players. His name is Steve Nash, and he says basketball is the best game in the world. I think it has the greatest athletes in the world as far as the combination of size and speed and hands and coordination and touch and stuff like that. For a basketball player, I'm not that tall. For my position, I've got decent size. 6'2 um, is not bad for a point guard. Make it to the body and get, get three. The point guard is responsible to lead the team, make sure the team gets into offense, take care of the ball. He does all the ball handling, brings the ball up court, breaks pressure, does that sort of thing. And then secondary is shooting and scoring and penetrating, but most importantly is to lead the team and handle the ball. I think it's a great team, you know, I'm really happy to be a part of it. Uh, it's a great group of guys, which is pretty unique for a, a national team. You know, usually there's a lot of egos involved, but this year everyone seemed to put them aside and really just come together and really gelled as a team. We're, you know, we really have great unity in our team. I'm, I'm looking forward to the challenge. I don't think anyone's a natural in basketball. Some people are natural athletes, some people are, are, have naturally great hands and stuff, but I think the basketball is something you have to develop. I remember when I started playing like on a real team in the eighth grade, and you know, that was really a, a fun time for me. I just started out and I started to love the game even though I wasn't very good. Basketball really was something that I became addicted to. It was, you know, the challenge of becoming good at it. Something I, you know, grabbed onto and I, and I just went with it every day. I worked on my game all the way through high school, every day of my life, you know. And, you know, that's how I got to the national team and you know, hopefully I can keep doing that. Well, my biggest dream right now is to win a gold medal at the World Championships. The Dream Team is the biggest obstacle in the world for basketball right now. You know, they're, they're unbelievably talented and they're a great team. They are coming. Here is Shaq Baby! I'll probably be guarding um, Mark Price or Kevin Johnson or Steve Smith so, or Joe Dumas. So. Those are people that are, you know, have been my heroes. And I'll have to put that aside if we play them, just how to go at them. They're the best players in the world. They're from the NBA, which is the biggest league, probably the biggest marketing machine in the world. And, you know, they deserve to be a... Uh, to have all the hype, you know, it's all theirs, and uh, I think that's, you know, I'm fortunate that the Canadian team doesn't get any hype, but that's fine, um, we haven't proven ourselves yet, and we're ready to prove ourselves now, we'll have a chance to make Canada proud. Canada in black, Angola in white, and we are underway at Maple Leaf Gardens as Wiltshire wins the tip, and it bounces to Steve Nash. Good job, Rick Fox chasing down that loose ball and tapping it to Steve. Nash, a pretty cool customer, just 20 years of age, but he is seeing more and more playing time in Ken Shield's system. It's a great experience to play at home, you know, to play in a great city like Toronto in your own country, uh, to, you know, defend your, your country, you know, it's a great feeling, it's a great experience. Now another steal for Canada, Nash is in alone. He's a tough player, really gets down and plays dirty basketball. He says, and he doesn't say it in a cocky way, but that's possible, he says he's going to play in the NBA one day, and a lot of people who watch him think he's right. I believe him. He's played a lot of two-guard in his career, moving to the point on the full-time basis now with the left hand. My favorite person in the world is my mom. I love my mom. She's the best in all the world. And, uh, you know, she's always there for me. And, you know, it feels good that no matter, like, I went away to school, no matter where you are, you always got your mom back home. It's always rooting for you, always there for you. If something goes wrong, you always got your mom. She's beautiful. My mother was watching right now. I just tell her I love her and that I'm going to try to win the gold medal for her and that I'll see you soon.
couple of dashes taste great. Now imagine a three-minute marinade. Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire sauce. And three minutes, that's all it takes. You're just three minutes to delicious with Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire. The Instant Marinade. I remember loving my dollhouse more than anything. Mom! So when I got one for Kimmy, I wanted it to be really special. That's why I picked the Play School dollhouse. There are seven big rooms, lots of furniture, and a very nice family. It's easy for her to reach in and play, and there are so many fun accessories you can add. A washer and dryer, a backyard barbecue, a cute convertible, and these adorable decorator sets. The Play School dollhouse looks just beautiful in her room, but most important, Kimmy's crazy about it. From the creator of the award-winning television series, Wild America, comes a home video unlike anything you've ever seen. Here is the timeless drama of predator and prey, the stalker and the stalked. Yet these are encounters of incredible survival against all odds. These are nature's great escapes, captured in one of the most astonishing real-life films ever made, and available now for the first time in this special one-hour video. Call this toll-free number now and order Great Escapes for just $29.95. Order now and you'll also receive free The Best of Wild America the First Ten Years from the only series ever to exclusively portray the wonders of American wildlife. That's right, both of these extraordinary programs are yours for just $29.95. So call now. Have your credit card ready and call 1-800-258-0229. Here's what happens when fashion design meets computer design. These cuts, colors, and fabrics were brought together in an experimental 3D computer program. The computer recreates the motion of a runway model and it can simulate how different fabrics and textures react to body movement. That means designers can see in advance how their creations will look. Ultimately, we would like to, to give a 3D software package tool to a fashion designer who will then be able to actually simulate clothing prior to manufacture to reduce some of the, um, the amount of time it takes in discussing a garment before it's made up in the real world. But don't worry, these models aren't about to put Cindy Crawford out of work. Experts say computer models just don't have enough attitude to make it in this business. This machine is called the CAE MaxView Full Flight Simulator. It's used to train flight crews for the new Boeing 777. Inside, it's an exact replica of a real cockpit right down to the tiniest details. The Max View can simulate just about any weather and mechanical conditions to make sure the crew is ready to handle all emergencies. Today in, the, in North America, an airline pilot cannot fly a commercial airline without being able to train on a simulator, and the Max View is part of that training equipment. Pilots can also practice landings and takeoffs from airports created from satellite aerial and ground level photos. Finally, if you're sick of mowing your lawn, then you'd probably like one of these. A solar powered robot controlled lawn mower. 28 solar panels give it power while an insulated leash keeps it on your lawn. Unfortunately, the mower does not work where you need it most. Steep inclines and lawns with a lot of trees are still a real pain. Okay, picture this. Boy meets girl, girl meets boy, they go out on a date, and nothing. No talking, no touching, no romance. Sounds like one of my reoccurring nightmares. First dates can be pretty painful, but there may be a solution. Our reporter Wilf Dinnick visited what could be a dating paradise. Andrew Norton and Kim Forks have been friends for years, but that could all change with a trip to this amusement park. There's no way I'm going on the big rides. <laughs> But the big rides and the big fun could mean love for these two. Just ask Dr. Judy Karansky. There's a lot of process that can happen that could be helpful to your love life. Dr. Karansky says theme parks can turn friends into lovers. So maybe this is a good time for both of you to come together, don't you think? <laughs> maybe. The first step, according to Dr. Karansky, is something smooth and easy, a confidence builder. Whoa! So guys, what did you think? It was a little boring. 
Well, it could have been could have been longer and it could have been faster. Do you guys feel uh, a little closer, maybe? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> so, what's the problem? You want just enough excitement level to get you activated, but not too much to make you paralyzed. But Andrew isn't loving this ride, and Kim isn't loving Andrew. These rides aren't helping. Maybe we need something more. Then you can go on with the roller coasters, but the roller coasters should not be the ones that make you sick, where your, you know, lunch is in your throat. <laughs> like, what would you like to do next? Roller coaster or something? Okay, that's fine with me. That's fine with me. If he, if he can break the roller coaster. So you guys ready for this ride? Yeah. Do you want a so corn dog good. first? No, thanks. No. You're all right? I'm not hungry. There are chemicals that flow in your body when you go on the right kind of ride. And those chemicals are extremely powerful. But Kim and Andrew aren't feeling the reaction. So we gave it one last chance. So, what's the verdict? The end of the day? How do you guys feel about each other? <laughs> Same as when we came. <laughs> it didn't work? No, I don't think so. Believe me, after 25 years of being a psychologist, there's nothing to lose and a lot to gain. For YTV News in Toronto, I'm Will Finnick. If you think the real thing's rough, try computer surfboarding. Sure, it's not the beach, but you can do all the same moves, including... <laughs> Whoa, this car's out of control. Actually, it's participating in the hydraulic competition in New York. One of the biggest aspects of these shows is the hydraulic competition. And probably the most popular of, of the hydraulic competition is the car dancing. That car sure has rhythm. This road was blocked off after a truck lost its load of cucumbers. And what a pickle. And what a nice fin you've got there. It's called Jaws Does Cape Cod. I think I'll stay on the beach today, thank you. The shark is probably no match for 13-year-old Beverly Young. She's a weightlifter who set an unofficial world record with a 100-kilo lift. What a gal. And what a guy. Kenny Rogers became the 11th pitcher in Major League history to pitch a perfect game. Speaking of perfect, take a look at this catch by Toronto Blue Jay Devon White. Let's see that again in slow-mo, Devo. What grace, what style. Just hang in there, buddy. He's gonna do it again. Oh, I thought that was a little Oops, too, too bad. Crab tying, now that's a sport. But like most things, it's all fun and games till someone loses a finger. or close to it. Them crazy Aussies, what will they think of next? And finally, these kids in Vancouver know how to have fun. It's as if they miss the cold Canadian winters or something. Truly weird. And that's just around the corner, a few months actually. That's it for this week. Next week, Jan will be in studio with us. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Take care. Bye-bye. Stars will collide this week when Tarzan Dan parks his trailer in the back lot of Universal Studios. Come along for the ride on The Hit List, Tuesday night at 6.30 on YTV.
Hi, Dev. Tell us about the new show. Packed with laughs. Squawk It's my new show. There's other people on the show, Dub. No. Well, yeah. Big roles coming up, right? Big. Really big. No, no, no. Throw it on the block again. <laughs> Squawk Box, world premiere Thursday, August 18th. <laughs> Something's happening at the Edison household. Dad? Yeah. Dad? What? Dad? What? <laughs> You might be in for a bit of a startle. So, let the pros handle it. If you do get involved, just watch your step at the Edison's. You know what I mean? Maniac Mansion, coming up next on YTV.